uh, presenter, our speaker, um, Fiona Planke, to uh, join us and introduce ISMPP. Uh, let me just briefly introduce Fiona to all of you. Fiona Plunkett um, has uh, got her PhD from University of Bristol before doing a postdoc at University College London. She has 16 year experience in medical communication across multiple therapy areas, as well as um, specific expertise in strategic publish, uh, publication planning. She is currently serving a uh, Europe trustee of ISMPP and is an author of DPP 2022. Over to you, Fiona. Thank you so much um, and thank you very much for the opportunity as well to partner with you for this webinar and to introduce ISMA. Yes. Just uh, one more thing, Fiona and rest of the speaker, when you are done with the current slide, just let me know next. So I will okay. move to jump to next. Brilliant, thank you. So for those who are not aware, ISMA stands for the International Society for Medical Publication Professionals and was um, established actually getting on for almost 20 years ago. And the per whole purpose of ISMAP really is dedicated to ensuring the ethical and transparent uh, communication of research. And it represents all stakeholders that are involved within this process. And as an organization, we are there to support everybody in their professions to ensure that they, um, people who are members of ISMAP and who are com they're committed to ensuring the transparent and um, publicate um, transparent publication of scientific data, and ensure that we do this in the best possible way. Um, ISMAP works really hard with the community to improve standards and best practice. And one of the best things I think um, about ISMAP's mission statement is the education and the ad advocacy they provide for our community. And in addition to that as well, it's, it's a brilliant community to be part of because you've got a whole lot of people with a huge wide variety of experience that you can tap into. You know, there's um, brilliant kind of connect boards and things like that where you can ask for help and advice from your colleagues. If you go on to the next slide, there are around 2000 members, um, currently just over 2000 members for ISMAP. And they're from all of the sort of range of um, jobs and roles that you would expect from a medical communication society. So from the pharma biotech side, from agencies like the one that I work for myself, we also represent publishers, academia, as well as professional medical writers and some students. So um, the vast majority of members come from North America and Europe, as you'll see by this pie chart, but there's been a huge focus from ISMAP to increase the membership in the Asia Pacific region and, and you'll see now that it's currently at 10% of the total membership and this has been growing steadily over the last few years and you can see that comes from a wide variety of different countries within the region um, and quite recently as well over the last few years there has been an addition to the ISMAP board for a member from the Asia Pac region to ensure that we're making sure that our education and our activities are are specific and correct to the needs right across the region. If you go on to the next slide. The next slide just shows you some of the um, recent activities from ISMAP in the region, um, as well as recent collaborations. And um, some of you may be aware already of the um, ISMAP U stands for ISMAP University and they're the educational webinars that take place usually on a monthly basis. Um, and now we run ones that are specific for the Asia Pac region. Uh, there are also meetings that take place um, every two years, normally around September. And the planning for the next meeting in 2023 is already underway. ISMAP have also facilitated the translation um, of various documents like GPP3, for example, uh, and GPP 2022 has already started the process to be translated to Chinese and Japanese. And if there's any other languages people need, and um, we're always open to suggestions, so please let us know. Uh, and then there's various other statements from medical writing organizations and things that have also been translated to really facilitate communication within the region. And we've built some really great collaborations as well with various organizations that you can see listed here where we've um, done various webinars. And of course, today we're very privileged as well to be partnering with the Asian Council of Science Editors 
um, to discuss GPP 2022. So um, if you go on to the next slide, um, ISMAP also um, have a publication professional um, qualification called CMPP, which stands for Certified Medical Publication Professional. And what this does is once you get this qualification, it, it completely validates the fact that you are an expert in medical as a medical publication professional um, and that you're committed to ethical and transparent data dissemination and that you want to hold up the practices um, that are um, the society kind of believe in. Um, and it's a, re it's a really good exam um, and something that really can put a stamp on you to say, I know what I'm doing. I am you know, at the top of my profession and I believe in doing everything in the most transparent and ethical manner. Initially, you do an exam, which is 150 questions long, and then after, and the exams take place twice a year. And then it, your qualification lasts for five years and then you're able to recertify. And you can either do that by doing another exam or what's much better is that you can earn credits over those five years for attending you know, some of the webinars that ISMAP take place or attending the meetings and that builds up your credits and then you don't actually have to ever take the exam again, which is always a good thing, right? <laughs> If you then go on to the next slide. <clears throat> so if you become a member of ISMAP, there's a huge number of resources that become available to you. Um, ISMAP um, supported the development of GPP 2022, but has also been involved in lots of other different things, which you can see on this. And one thing I did want to point out was the ISMAP authorship algorithm tool. Um, as long as you've got an, um, a, a member of ISMAP who is um, put in as an editor you can then a whole team is able to use this and I think anyone working in medical publications will know that authorship is one of the more trickiest things we have to navigate because everybody's got an opinion and it's a, a really excellent tool to be able to use. If you then go on to the next slide. This is just um, kind of summary of some of the collaborations and outreach that we are doing in the Asia Pacific region so Obviously today, as mentioned, we're here with the Asian Council of Scientific Editors, but we've also um, collaborated with the Australian Medical Writers Association and, and various other organisations. And if you think there's anyone that would be useful for ISMAP to partner with and you'd like our support, please, please feel free to reach out. And obviously across the rest of the world, there's various other organisations that we're proactively working with as well. Them. Finally, go on to my last slide, which is the next one. So, how can we, how can ISMAP benefit you in what you do? So, we have, as mentioned, we have various conferences ac across the globe in the Asia Pacific. Um, the one in the Asia Pacific region takes place in September, and planning is already underway for the one that will be take place in 2023. ISMAP itself has a huge amount of resources that are available as well educational webinars, podcasts, online newsletters, um, and various position statements and guidelines so that you can let, you know, work in the best possible way. And the ISMAP community itself, as mentioned, it's called Connect, is, is absolutely a fantastic place to be. You know, if you've ever got a question, you can pop it in there and then you get this amazing community of people who will help you with any experience and advice that they've got. It's a really, it's a really great thing. And I think that's one of the best things about ISMAP. There's a QR code there as well, which takes you to the ISMAP website. There are a number of free resources and um, that you can tap into. So uh, please feel free um, to scan the code. And if you do have any questions, the email address is there or feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, and with that, I'd like to say thank you to um, ACSC for uh, um, hosting this GPP22 webinar and for partnering with ISMAP. Thank you.